Hey, Pierre. So today let's talk about the data wrangling grid within Notable. So anytime you have a data frame return, either from a pandas data frame or the results of a SQL cell, uh, we drop you into this rich data wrangling table, which is really helpful for doing exploratory data analysis. So I'll kind of walk through some of the high level features of it here, but just first as background, um, I just read in a CSV file of rotten tomato reviews uh, into a pandas data frame. You can see it's about 17,000 rows there. And then I just uh, rendered that data frame, which again, uh, by default shows you this rich data wrangling grid. You can easily scroll over and look at you know, all the columns in the grid as well as scroll down and look at all the rows here because there are um, over 17,000 rows in this data. But some of the other helpful things that we add that uh, really kind of help you understand um, the data and, and you know, the distributions of it are some of the sparkline charts you see up at the top here. So you can see this is a metric column for runtime the number of minutes to the length of the movie, as well as here's a categorical column for the uh, ratings of the movie. And then from here, we can actually start creating filters on this to kind of look down and, and um, you know, help, help us make more sense of that data. So I can go ahead and brush a filter on the runtime. You can see it's over on the right. You can see it automatically updated the Spark, uh, the Spark charts in the other columns. Or I can go in here and create categorical filters, right? So there's one for PG, this is one for PG-13 as well. And again, you can see um, the data automatically being adjusted and filtering down and all the other Spark charts as well. Let's go nice. and both of these here in a second. What if I want to sub the, the results? Yeah, absolutely. So you can see at the top of each column, right, you get the ability to sort. So you can toggle sort the column, like sort of ascending or sort of descending. And you see it's automatically um, um, sort, sorting the column there for you. Awesome. And you can also search ISO, right, when you're doing the filter. But... Yep. So the other way you can you know get started with like searching the stuff here is just a, a straight search bar, which is filtering down the table below. So I can type in the word PG there and see it's filtering on any row on any column um, that has the word PG in it. So you can see obviously the content rating that filtered on there, but it would hit any other fields there as well. And one of the other things that's that really helpful here is just the manage columns option. So there's a lot you may want to do with kind of you know customizing the display of the table when it comes back uh, with a notable here. Uh, and so from this uh, little popover right here, you can hide the visibility of certain columns. You can see I already had one that I had turned off. I can easily hide visibility. I can pin visibility of columns. You can see now these first two columns are pinned. As I'm scrolling off to the right here, they will always uh, you know, appear. I can rename it. So I can say, I'm gonna call this one the release date instead of that you know, thing with the underscores in there. You can see it's updated there. You can also do it from the, um, from the top of the column there as well. And then you can reorder things. So if I saw, you know, feel that was, you know, down here below, like, ooh, the, you know, tomato meter count, I can drag that one up, right, and include it next to some of the other metric columns that I want to play with up here um, in, in the first preview of the notebook. Nice. And the pinning feature um, seems very useful. Mm -hmm. Other what cool thing. The, yeah, what about the, the aggregation metric at the top? Yeah, so talk about aggregation metric, right? So for, for all the columns down at the very bottom here, you can see this kind of aggregated uh, metric that we're providing. Uh, for cat for numerical columns, sorry, like metric columns like this, you get the option to change it from count to be something like an average. So I can look at, you know, what's the average tomato meter count, or if I want to look at average runtime across the entire data set there, I can see that. And as I'm um, doing filters there, it's, you know, again, it's automatically updating the aggregation metrics down below. Uh, for categorical columns, the only really one we can provide is just a count, right? Well, what's the total number of, um, you know, rows we're displaying there. Uh, but one of the other neat features, if I go back and find, oh, it's right here, um, is changing the uh, the data type, right? So you can see at the top here, you get a little icon that tells you whether or not it's a string, whether or not it's an integer, you know, what kind of column it is. Often when you're reading in uh, CSV files as pandas data frames, it's going to treat a uh, uh, date time as a string as, as opposed to a date time. So you can easily go in here. Click this and you get all the options of all the data types you can change it to. So I'm gonna change it to a date and time. I'll go ahead and apply that. And now that it's treated as a date time, you can see we get a distribution chart that's uh, reflective of the fact that these are date times. And they can use now brush metrics, um, or sorry, brush a filter on top of that um, to kind of filter down based on the distribution chart. Nice, but now I see the date time kind of is pretty complex to read. Is there a way to maybe make it easier to, to pass? Yeah, there you go. So you can see you can change the format as well. So after we've changed the type of it, uh, I can change the format to kind of customize the display of how I'd like to have it displayed. Super cool. Thank you, Dave. Thank you.